I am Gary Cassie, and have you ever wondered why it seems like the rat race never ends? You just feel helpless in the day-to-day -day routine? Well, today on Fixing the Money Thing, we're going to talk about the keys to unlock the power of provision in your life. I'm Gary Cassie, and for nine years, we lived in a financial, chaotic, stress-filled, visionless life. I cried out to God. He said, you're living like many of my people are, living in debt. He said, I want my people free. Your financial freedom is closer than you think. America's financial coach, Gary Cassie, shares the kingdom principles that changed his life defeated his debt and set him free. Financial problems, they're slow death. We're trying to change the way you think about money. This is Gary Cassie, Fixing the Money Thing. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and welcome to Fixing the Money Thing. Boy, do we have a lot of great things to talk about today. And we have really a story that's just amazing. And we have Drenda with us today. Hey, great Drenda, to be with you today. Great to be together and yes, talk yes, I'm about so excited life. about your new book, Your Financial Revolution: The Power of Provision. Yes, it's yes. a great book, and you went back and you gave some background to help reestablish people who've never heard your kingdom teaching, which I think is the best mm. anywhere. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. I know it did change our life, so yes, it we did. know it uh, it works, and uh, we want to encourage uh, those that are that are watching today that to get a piece of paper because we're going to give you some keys to unlock your provision. In fact, the title of the book, The Power of Provision, isn't just a saying. It just isn't a nice little title. We discovered the power of provision. We did. I mean, what, nine years, we lived in serious debt. Yes. We had I mean, collectors calling. We were living in an 1800s farmhouse. We could hardly put any money toward gasoline. I, sometimes we just put a dollar's worth in the car. I remember doing a dollar yes. here and a dollar there. And it was a tough time. It looked like, hey, we love God, but where are you, Lord, in our finances? And I know some people feel that way. It's like, God, yes. are you there? Where, where is the provision that your word uh, talks about? We had that question because uh, as believers, we were serious about God. We loved God. We loved going to church. We were involved with church. I love the anointing. I already had an Old Testament degree. I had a Bible, a year of Bible school. And yet, what we saw in the Bible wasn't happening in our life. Mm -hmm. And yet, it's, here's how I viewed the Bible. If, if it doesn't work for this, how do I have confidence it works for this? So I figured it has to, it has to, where's, there's something wrong, right? Right, there's, we were missing something. There's it, a key that's missing. Mm -hmm. And you, you came to me one day, I'll never forget, in the farmhouse, as we were in our struggle and things just didn't look like they were working, I remember you coming and saying, Duran, I'm sorry, God, show me that I haven't trusted in him, that I, I don't know how his kingdom works. Well, that didn't happen by accident. That was after the, bio, the bills piled up, phone calls, judgments, liens, IRS liens, every credit card canceled, uh, everything broken and no money in the house and creditors calling us every day. And finally, they got fed up with me answering the same way. Well, I'll try to get that to you. And he said, okay, that's it. We're filing a lawsuit against you. You had to have the money here in three days or that's it. And you know, sadly, Gary, our friends were in the same boat. The people we went to church with, our friends that were raising kids and everything, they seemed to be in the same situation. And we were, we were like, God, if you'll show us how to do this, we'll, we'll help people. We just yeah, don't well, know how or we what didn't the answer know, is. We didn't know. And uh, like you said, most people that I see out there don't know. But when that attorney called, I went upstairs to our little bedroom in that farmhouse, and I cried out to God. I mean, I just like, I have no clue. And he spoke to me and said, you're in this mess because you've never learned how my kingdom operates. And that phrase, I didn't have clarity with that. What, is, what does he mean, I don't know how his kingdom operates? Well, I remember when we, when we prayed that prayer you just mentioned, I, we, we prayed, God, you got to show us, because I didn't have a clue when I came to you and said that. Mm -hmm. I said, God, you got to show us. What do you mean? You're, and he you're did. Kingdom. He did. He did begin to um, unpack, if you will. I saw, began to see things different in the Bible. But the very first thing that happened, that attorney that called was calling because we were late uh, on our um, visa bill, whatever it was, some kind of a loan, uh, about $1,900. In three days, okay, $1,900 back then was like a million dollars. It was. <laughs> I mean, the refrigerator's empty. I mean, 
we have our own business. There's nothing in the pipeline to produce that in three days. And, um, you know, what am I going to do, right? Well, we are in uh, sales and driving to clients' homes and talking to them about finances. And that, that next night, we had three days to get the money there, driving to a client's house. Talk to him, you know, and the, t tell us about the cars. They want to hear about the cars we drove. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had an old caravan, and it smoked whenever you drove it. Yep. And uh, sometimes it didn't shut off when you turned it off. So it would kind of sputter and yeah, make some well, noise afterwards. Smoke is a very and polite it would smoke word. And, uh, but, you know, when you've got a small family, old kids, we've got to, we needed a van to be able to carry them around, and uh, it was old, and it was a lot of miles on it, and it yeah. needed fixed. It needed replaced, actually, but we didn't have the money to even fix it. Yeah. And now we've got these visa, you know, that debt's due, and it's due in a few days. I knew I was at church that night, and I got a call from you, and you shared with me what happened to that old van. And I know you well, also had a Peugeot. We had two vehicles. Yeah, we had two, two we had wonderful old, cars. We had Peugeot, and the frame was bent. <laughs> yeah, right. So when we went down the road, it looked like we were turning because the frame was bent on this car. Yeah, so so we that were... was that was our the, our two vehicles. The one was your business vehicle, the one that went down the road crooked. Yeah, yeah. And then we right. had the caravan. So. so that's why we weren't really advertising them right. by parking right. them in front of my client's house. But I remember We'd you calling me. We'd always park me. around the corner. Yeah, and you were like, Drenda, you'll never forget, you'll never believe what happened tonight. You yes. Know? So I drove that old van to a client's house, and afterwards, I was leaving his house and. Of course, it, you said smoke, which is very polite. It bellowed at smoke. It fills, it fills the yard. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to turn it on in front of this client, so I parked around the corner, but he followed me. And I got to the car and had to start it, and then he turned it off. Of course, that's what he'd say. He's going to be fumigated if he didn't. I mean, it was just bad. It was bad. I'm just kidding. But he, was, he said, he did this. He said, turn it off, turn it off. He comes up, open the hood, he said. So he looks in the hood. He says, I'm a mechanic, he said. I, I have my own business on the side. So he said, you got a busted head gasket. Drive it home and fix it. Well, I, I, we've, we've had the head gasket repaired on that before. We knew it was about an $800 job or a $1,000 job. I didn't, we didn't have any money. So driving home back to the office, which is about six miles or so, I noticed this bubble on the hood. I, I thought I saw a little spot on the hood I, I'd never seen before. And as I looked at it, I thought, is that thing getting bigger? And it's slowly, it was getting bigger. And I thought, something's going on under that hood, you know? But what happened was, as I was driving it, thinking of the money, before this bubble showed up, I said, out loud, I said, God, what am I going to do with this van? Maybe it's better if it just burned up and the insurance pays it off. And I said, I'm just tired of this thing. The things we say when we're disgusted and busted, right? Now. Yeah, that wasn't a faith prayer. But when I said that, I looked down, I saw, I saw that bubble. So I got to the office and pulled in there. And as I was pulling into the office, the front end just burst. I mean, just bellowed flames about six foot off that hood. The whole thing just burned up. And I'll never forget that. You know, I sat there thinking, I mean, I was kind of in shock. Like, what happened? I just said that. I mean, what happened? Right. And it, it just burned up. And now, Moses had a burning bush. You had a burning van. Yeah, I had a burning van. And two, two blocks down the street was the fire department. Yeah, two blocks. You literally ran on well, foot. Well, no, no, right? I, I correct that. Not two blocks, two houses. <laughs> okay. Down is the same street, just two houses right. down the street. So I call them, and they don't come. And you, you know? ran down there, didn't you, to go get them? Well, I started to, <laughs> and they, they come, you know, as one of those volunteer fire departments, and so right. here they come. And I can remember the captain comes up to me and puts his arm around me and says, man, I'm sorry about your van, but I was thinking, praise God, this thing is burned up, you know, but I was afraid he thought I would, I did it, you know, but I didn't. But anyway, long story short, the van was totaled. They gave us the check. We paid that attorney's bill within three days mm -hmm. and an amazing story, but that caught my attention. Right. They, I, we prayed, God teach us how the kingdom operates. Was that a result of something that I said? I remember thinking, I said that. Mm -hmm. And so God began to kind of we curiously began to see things happen, and he began to show us right. why things happened. Right, and then we needed a vehicle because now we paid off the debt that was due, but we now don't no longer had a vehicle. Yeah, I remember and that how, evening. And how God provided that, and all these different things he started showing us about his word and his kingdom and the principles that you include in your book. Yes. The, your financial revolution, the power of provision. And we want to help people go on their own financial revolution because we went on to get out of debt. Yes. and pay off all of our debt, then to save cash, and our business went on to prosper, 
uh, uh, yeah, everything miracles, changed. big big things started happening. Right. But there were some principles that you grabbed a hold of, and we began to learn as a family. And uh, those were those were the things that changed everything. Everything. You know, we're not that good. We weren't that good. No. But you know, as you said, we began to prosper, build our dream home, pay cash for our cars. Uh, now having the ability at that time to, to start giving thousands or hundreds of thousands away mm -hmm. to projects. I mean, folks, you've got to understand, it's like nine years we lived like that. Nine years, and now all of a sudden we're tapping into this new realm of uh, expectation and understanding mm -hmm. where it's just prospering and paying all the debt off, being totally debt free. It's just, it was amazing. When we come back, I want to talk more about the actual principles that God showed us and kind of help you understand that it wasn't us, there were keys that we tapped right. into that anyone can tap into when we come back. It's time to defeat your debt and discover your destiny. Well, this is your financial revolution. Join Gary Cassie Sunday and Monday, September 17th and 18th at the Hope Cathedral in Jackson, New Jersey, and on Friday and Saturday, September 22nd and 23rd at Real Life Church in Greer, South Carolina to experience this groundbreaking financial revolution conference. You will never discover your destiny and your purpose until you fix the money thing. Welcome back to Fixing the Money Thing. Again, I'm Gary Cassie, and we're talking about unpacking the keys principles to bring the provision that you need in life. And so that's a big topic. And Drenda, we, we've, we've lived through it. We've been lived talking it. about yes. our story of coming out of nine yes. years of serious financial dysfunction and then living free and paying cash for cars and houses and, and seeing God do amazing things. Yes, and see him do it in thousands and thousands of other yeah, people's lives all the as time, well. All the time. So I'm looking in the book, Gary, and you make yeah. this quote, you have to release the power of the kingdom of God here in the earth realm because only you, a man or woman on the earth, can legally do it. So how do we legally release the kingdom, the power of the kingdom here in the earth? Well, that's a big question. It may take us a little to get into the depth of it, but first, the very foundation. If I had a few minutes with you and you would say, what is the most important thing to start the discussion is the word you have in that, pair, that sentence is kingdom. Now, mm -hmm. most, I believe most believers do not have the concept of kingdom. They have the concept of God, mm -hmm. which they probably have wrong as well because so many have his character misaligned. God allows bad things and all of that. But think of a king. All right, now think of a king and a kingdom. Now, a mob of people is not a kingdom. Right. So if we had a mob of people that are under a king, we know that that infers a government because a king's authority, he dictates laws, which are then enforced through a system, if you will, mm -hmm. of government to every citizen, basically guaranteeing to every citizen the will of the king. Is right. a government, all right? right? So it brings order to this chaos of a right. mob, all right? So kingdom is first thing you gotta remember is is laws. See, most Christians think if I beg, if I beg loud enough, cry hard enough, and whatever, that's what's gonna bring the, the will of God in their life. Hmm. He's already given you the will of God. See, the government, the king decrees, he's already decreed what his will is right here. We don't have to go begging for it. We already have it, right? So the first thing you want to understand is, number one, who the king is. And if the king's corrupt, if he truly does bring cancer on people and kills people and no one can trust him, which we hear, right? God allowed this and God allowed that. And, you know, God, God, you, know you hear all the time someone dies at an untimely death. And, well, God has the plan. He knows best. You know, it's all in his control. That concept doesn't work with government, because government doesn't fluctuate. It has laws, right? So the king has to be good. If he's good, right. then his governing right. is good. His laws are good. Right, and then we need access to the laws that he's created. So how do yes. we gain the access All to right. that? All right, so, let's, so Ephesians 2.19 So he's 2, good. We establish God is good. Okay, first, that's the first. In fact, in, in my book, I spend a lot of time laying the foundation at the very front that you have to know the king before you can trust his laws, mm -hmm. all right? You have to know he's good because it'll help you interpret his laws properly. All right, right. now, how do we tap into that mm -hmm. is 
it's a law, so really we tap into it by allowing him to tap into it. Essentially, if it's his law, we know he's going to back it up. Let's, let's just talk about the United States for a minute. All right, there's laws in this country, right? And these laws are guaranteed to you as a citizen. And let's say that you want to tap into the laws of the United States, you would tap into them by trusting the U.S. government to enforce those laws. Right. That's how you tap into it. You believe what the law says, and you trust the process of justice to protect and enforce right. those laws. Mm. All right? But here's the problem. Most people, and Christians included, do not know the laws that God began to teach me. Right. They right. didn't understand the laws. And it makes sense how the enemy would try to attack God's goodness, just like he would try to attack a government and its laws, so that mm -hmm. evil would tear down those righteous laws. And so in the mind of believers, if they don't believe the king and believe that he's good and believe that his laws are true and that they can actually access these promises, they're not going to go after them. Instead, they're going to give in to the enemy and he's going to be able to corrupt the government, if you will. Okay, so exactly. That's but good. let's add to that. So let's say I had a billion dollars in the bank. All right, how do I get it out? How do I spend it? Okay, so I, I'm a citizen. Now, Ephesians 2.19 says that we are citizens of God's kingdom and sons and daughters, which means we have the inheritance right, of the heirs. entire estate and the legal system of citizenship, meaning the, the justice system, if you will, of God's kingdom, mm -hmm. to bring to pass his will. All right, so if I go to the bank and I want to get the, the money out, it's my money already, mm -hmm. but there's a legal process. Yes. There's a process which is actually for my protection. Correct. That ensures... Correct. To keep an imposter from taking your money. Exactly. Taking it, your promises, taking your inheritance. Exactly. It ensures that I am the only one that gets it, but there's a legal process. I have to sign the back of a check. I have to whatever, you know, make a withdrawal legally to enjoy that. And here's the problem. Most Christians can read the promise. They read the scriptures, but they have no idea how to cash the check. Hmm. Mm, that's good. Now, how, and that's what the, the book covers. That you book covers that in depth. How to actually take the steps. There are steps in here to show people how yes, to access yes. God's kingdom, how to tap into his government. We break it down. Uh, you know, the title, Your Financial Revolution. You have to change allegiance. You have to align yourself with what the government of God says to enjoy what God says, right? Correct. So you've got to throw out the old system, the, uh, the old way of thinking. And so it has to be a revolution. You have to change how it operates in your mind, in your life. And so God began to take us on this journey to show us how to tap into the government of God and actually receive what the Bible says. Quite frankly, Drenda, everything you see written should happen. Mm -hmm. it should, I mean, it, it should happen. Right. You should have everything the Bible says. Right. He's given us everything that pertains to life exactly. and godliness so this book has all the answers to life and godliness. Right, But exactly. I, accessing that, Gary, I know we, we went on this journey and you discovered these things, but what was the first thing that made you realize you've got to change kingdoms? Even though you're already born again believer, you're still living out of the yeah. old system, the old mindsets, the old patterns of yeah. this world, and still under the jurisdiction, if you will. You talk about changing jurisdictions, but what made you see that and how did you okay, transfer? Okay, well... When he spoke that to, to me in the bedroom, I, the word kingdom, obviously he said, because you don't know how my kingdom operates. Okay, then that began the, the journey of trying to figure out what this is all about, right? Mm -hmm. And um, Isaiah chapter 9 talks about that. We, we say it every Christmas. For unto us a child is born. You know that scripture we, we read every Christmas. Right. And it talks about that. The so government. God began to open this up, and it says that he'll be called... Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of His government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne over His kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. Now, that phrase is where God took me because it said His entire government is based on justice. Now, justice means administration of law. And righteousness is the king's decree. So let me say it this way. His entire kingdom as the king is based upon his decree of what right is, which we call righteousness, and justice, the administration of his law, to us, the citizens, mm -hmm. or to ensure that we have it. And so I began to understand it's a kingdom. I became a spiritual scientist. 
So I went back to the stories in the Bible, and I looked at the stories, and I said, how did that happen? What law is being revealed in that story? See, most people look at the story like, well, Jesus did it. But they don't realize he stepped out of the glory he had and became a man and lived under the law of Moses, like all the other Old Testament folks. So he, he yet had the authority. He was demonstrating the kingdom laws. And I wanted to find out what, what, what was he doing? How did he tap into that? Mm -hmm. How did those fish multiply? How did the bread multiply? How did this person get healed? Why wasn't this person healed? See, there, once you understand it's a kingdom, it sets up questions mm -hmm. that have answers. And then you discover the laws that go with that kingdom. You discover the laws. And, of course, God began to teach us in our own life all kinds of stories. We began to see and see and see and see these things happen, mm -hmm. as you know. And it was an amazing journey. And when we, we realized this is the truth and we were seeing people healed, we were seeing our life change right. and people's financial lives change, we thought, wait a minute. Who's telling people this? They right. need to know this, right? Right, right. Yeah. and you do that extensively in the book. Yeah. When we come back, could you pray, like you prayed that prayer that day that you discover, God said, you, you don't know how my kingdom works, and you prayed that prayer. When we come back, could you pray for people sure. and help them to enter into that same place that you entered that day as far as accessing and, sure. and really yes. having that transformational mindset of the kingdom. Yes, absolutely. Let's so do that. Let's do it. We'll come right back. We'll right. pray with you and we'll uh, end and talk more about these laws. Brenda, we want to pray yes. for them. Would you start and I'll yes. finish? Yes, Father, we just thank yes. you for our friends. We thank you, Lord. They are learning your provision. Amen. They are learning your kingdom, Father. And we just ask that just as you prayed that, uh, you prayed through Gary that day and he just came to you and said, God, I need to know your kingdom. You, you spoke to him. Lord, we want our friends to know your kingdom and that they would know the rights and benefits they have. And that today, if anyone's not received Jesus as Lord and Savior, that's the yeah, access to course, the kingdom. Yes. And we just thank you. They call right now in the name of Jesus that you just receive him as your Savior and then you access his kingdom. Father, we thank you that you you teach them your kingdom through these principles and that yes. they come into a new place of provision. They legally are able to enforce what is theirs. Yes. They receive what you've provided for them through Jesus and they yes. access it by faith in your in kingdom Jesus. and the principles yes. there, God. We thank you for that. And we Open thank you eyes. for freedom from fear. We pray their eyes be open, just as you said, Dorinda, that they would understand the revelation of the kingdom and receive that good news in Jesus' name.